what's happening people Dan Lawless here West Ham fan TV and I'm with a special guest today I'm here with Dan Woffenden now Dan Woffenden, uh, Woffenden I've been following you on Twitter for a while for, for the past few weeks since since the lockdown ended or just before and you've been providing some really good analysis some good stats on players um first of all just tell us a bit about what you do and and how you became to be such a such a you know statistician statistician is that what i call it yeah that's the one that uh, or analyst yeah well analyst I've been, yeah i've been a sports journalism student last three years at uconn and um I don't know what it was. Basically, it was just lockdown and they just wanted to up my, you know, Twitter profile and get some stuff up there. I started with football slices originally. Um, yeah. So that like breaks down the stats in like a slicer kind of diagram, which was good to do. And then my following just um, just went up a bit and I just just love doing it. And I do threads now. And like you said, analyst threads and just try and vary up the content for West Ham and um, get some stuff up there that's a niche to me and to other people so they can, you know, enjoy it and see something different. Oh yeah, no, it's it's really good that how you do it. And it breaks it down, like I said, simply, and you can follow because a lot of the time it's it's certain things that you don't notice. You know, you don't even realize it, and when it's there in black and white and it's quite straightforward, it, you sort of dawns you go, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. That's right. You know, and, and like you did a really good one on Alaire, which was the first one I saw, and I've been sort of champion Alaire, champion championing Alaire for a while. So to yeah. see it there you know the actual stats to back up what i was thinking in my opinion it was it was great for me you know and i shared it so if you do want those usually i, I do promote people's Twitter at the end but as we're talking about it it's mm -hmm. at dan woff 98 so dan w-o-f-f -F 98 so you can go and get that and um yeah but today we're going to be talking about felipe anderson um i mean it's one of those players we were so hyped when we signed him. We were buzzing, forty-five million pound from yeah. Lazio, and yeah. decent first season. Decent first season in the Premier League, like all things considered. I think he had a pretty good season. We it was quite exciting to watch him. And this season seems to be a little bit more difficult this season. So what would be good is to go through some of the some of the background information, some of the stats to see. You know, has he been as bad as we think? For one, and two. Is there a way we can get the most out of him, or is are we better off just cashing in? Um, yeah. I mean, first of all, just give me give me your sort of overall sort of thoughts about your sort of knee jerk feeling about uh, Anderson. You know, without the stats, it's just from from watching the game. What was the sort of impression that you got from watching Anderson this season? From the, from the season, um, it's a mixed bag of you know amongst many fans, isn't it, Anderson? He's um, based, for me personally, he reminds me of Lanzini. He's you know he's got the ability, but you question his application. Is that there? Does he, you know, does he want to be on the pitch sometimes? I think I saw against Spurs away um, on the project restart this season. He um, he didn't look interested, did he? And neither did Lanzini. And the thing is with Anderson, uh, he's got, he's got the ability that's there to see. But I remember you know Lazio fans um, saying when we were interested that he's he's spectacular, but he's inconsistent, and that what's that you know what's making making himself frustrating. Uh, to watch as a West Ham fan and you know he can see games whenever you know you go or I go that he's got ability he can nutmeg players um, I think it was Norwich at the start of the season wasn't it he was he was brilliant yeah. he was unstoppable um, but then you know in the game say Sheffield United away he missed that chance he misses other chances and he's for me it all boils down to his decision making um, because he's got the yeah. ability it's just about you know what's he going to do next because I don't think he knows himself and that's where he needs to improve ultimately yeah, because I mean, a lot, a lot is sort of said about from fans about his attitude and commitment and things. But when you see him, you know, off the pitch, he always comes across super committed, always putting in extra training yeah, hours, it. and mm. he, he seems to have like a brilliant attitude off the pitch. So it's it's something isn't connected. Maybe it's frustration where you know what he's doing isn't working, and you know he, he's getting in his own head. He's getting frustrated. I don't think it's a case of he doesn't want to be here personally. I don't get that. And I think a lot of fans, when you get particularly foreign players and they go through a bad patch, it, the, the lazy card is thrown out very easily. Yeah, And I is. don't know whether... And that's the thing. It's, it's one of those things. What do we want? Do we want... Do you want a team with Mark Nobles? Or do you want some of these fancier flair players? Like, you've got to have a balance. And I think... You've got to have a, you've got to have a balance, like you said, Dan. And the fact is that... You know, like you said, the lazy card, it's thrown out 
far too easily in a sense. Yes, you could say Lanzini this season, but you could also question, you know, has his injury impacted it? You know, it's one of the worst injuries you can get as a footballer. So you've got to, you know, implement that as well into your thinking. But with Anderson, he wants to be there. You can, like you said, he's always training. He's always working hard on his Instagram uh, with his brother Julian. And, you know, he's he, he does work hard. He does put in the commitment off the pitch. But there's just something, like you said, that's not you know reflecting on the pitch and um it's, it's, it's difficult to work out yeah i mean it's a lot of i mean the, you you touched on decision making my biggest frustration with with anderson is that he doesn't know when to pass the ball he keeps onto the ball too long yeah. and he loses it just he loses the ball so often which is really that's the most frustrating thing for me the amount of times i think i can't remember what the game it was it was a wolves game it might have been I remember it, was, it might have been the Wolves game we played, but the amount of times that he lost the ball. And you can see each time he does it, it's affecting him. It's getting in his head more and more and more. And, is, yeah. you know, he's only getting worse because of it. And you can mm. see in his body language, he just, as soon as he loses the ball, he looks defeated. He's like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, That's the that thing, just... it, you know, for footballers, it's, it's, it's the mentality in your head. Once you get something wrong, it's the same with anything. You naturally, for him, it, it looks like, you know, it gets to him too much to the, you know, stage where, you know, Moyes has to shout at him or Pellegrini has to shout at him to, you know, to carry on to focus. And I think that is, like you said, a big problem with Felipe is that once he, you know, loses the ball, you can tell straight after, because when I watched the clips today, you could tell that he gets to his head too much and he, you know, it affects him for the rest of the game. But the ability is there without a doubt. Yeah. Um, I mean, so uh, one one thing I want to break into actually go down. Um, I think you mentioned this in your thread as well, but this has definitely been something that, a few people have, have sort of speculated on was he plays on the left wing, right? Um, so there is that whole thing about is the fact that he's got Creswell behind him, who isn't in, hasn't been in the best form the past few years. Has, is that holding him back? Because one thing I, I really noticed the first season that was frustrating me even was the amount of times that he hangs back and almost plays as like a left wing back. Like he, like Felipe Anderson, all the time he doesn't get forward enough and he's dropping back. And a lot of the time, like, Creswell is overlapping him when yeah. really you want Anderson in those positions that Creswell's getting in. You do, yeah, exactly. He, Anderson almost acts like as a second left back, like you said, or left wing back in the fact that he's so deep. Um, and that's not his game, you know. At Lazio, I think it was under Inzaghi, he um he came more centrally, but he always stayed high up the pitch. He was sometimes he was, he was the highest uh, Lazio player on a pitch. Sometimes immobile came deeper. Um, and that's you know that's the problem with West Ham over the years is the fact that we haven't upgraded in our fullback positions, and that's what is regressing us and not helping us to move forward. And until you know until we um, you know we upgrade or you know something like that, we um, we won't we won't progress. You know we won't, and that is a detriment a detriment to the likes of Anderson and Antonio and and Bowen that you know they. Cresswell and Fredericks may be good going forward, but they're not good defensively. And that's the ultimate downfall and has been for, for so many years at West Ham. Yeah, and, and that's that's the thing. We and a lot of time we've lacked creativity, and Anderson has that ability to be creative. That's why I mean I'd like to personally see him move to the middle and since he played in in a number 10 role and he doesn't have to focus on then, you know, getting back and doing that defensive, those defensive duties because People do criticise. It's so funny because some people have criticised him getting back, but he does get back. He does. That's his problem. He, he gets does, too yeah. far back. He does. He does too much defending. You want him to get forward and to focus on linking up with other players because I believe there was a stat actually, even this season, that surprised me that came out um, a while ago. Someone said it was that he's actually been involved in quite a few goals this season. Yeah, yeah I, um, I don't know you. if you have the number, but there's been a few. I don't know if you know off the top of your head how many. Exactly, but it's a surprising amount. I think he was involved in about four or five goals at the start of the season. Bournemouth for the Cresswell one where he headed it back to him. Uh, I think there was Leicester in December where he assisted four and hours. Left wing this season, he has got a 80% passing accuracy at Cam. He's got 82.4. It's not a major difference, but he's only played 301 minutes at Cam where he's not, you know, he's not expressing himself to, to show his capabilities in that position. And at Lazio, he... Um, he was always taking shots and, you know, and his end product was more convincing than it is in the wing. And I don't know whether he gets exposed or he's not used to playing there or, or whatever. But at Lazio, he had, he had that licence to, you know, free roam and get in between, you know, the midfield line and the defensive line to show what he can do. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a good player there. We just need to get the most out of him. I mean, you, you talked a bit about some of the stats. One of the things that you compared on your thread was obviously last season statistics versus this season. Um, so you came out and it was like touches. He was first for touches, uh, attacking third touches, successful dribbles. He was first with 8-4, ball carries first. Uh, 36 games so with appearances and pass completion second so he was up there then the numbers dropped down to like successful dribbles he drops down to second attacking third such as dropped down to third ball carries dropped down to fourth touches dropped yeah. down to seventh pass yeah. completions dropped down to seventh so there has to be an explanation there as to why he has regressed like from last season to this season because usually uh, from my feeling when I went at it when, when I was watching him in the first season it was like Great. He's got that first season of the Premier League under his belt now. He's got more use to the league. Now he can kick on. We're going to see a better yeah, Felipe yeah. Anderson in the second season. But it's been the opposite. So I don't know whether it's a case of tactics, um, personnel change, but there is there is something there. And I don't think it's as easy as people have just come up and, and decide, oh, we just decided he don't, we can't be bothered anymore. He's not interested anymore. He's become lazy now. It's... You know there has to be a reason, and this is what Moyes has to do. He has to he has to figure it out, and he has to look to get the best out of him, really. Exactly. Or if unless he wants to sell him. So yeah, I was I, I did some digging before. Uh, 101 touches in a penalty area last season, his first season. You know, which shows what a, you know what a big player he was for us, and how important he was going forward. This season, only 66 in the area. Um, 149 progressive runs in his first season, 92 progressive runs this season. So, like you said, there's big differences. Um, it, I know we've had a poor season, respectively, ourselves. You know, we've underperformed all of this, considering the squad we have. Um, has that affected him? Is it the mentality? Is it because there is a player there, like you said? You know, we've we've said this episode. There is there is a massive player there, and I just don't know whether we can unlock that or whether it's the tactics he suits at another club back in Lazio. Because some players just come to the Premier League, Dan, and it's just not suited to them. Um, yeah. But they go, they go overseas, and they, um, you know, they take it by storm. So it's it's one of them. It's confusing. Yeah, it's it, it is frustrating. It is frustrating. We paid forty five million pounds for him. Look, he's been one of the first names um, on a lot of fans' sort of lists to sell. Right. A lot of fans are like, right, if we need to sell to buy, we need to sell Anderson. Yeah. But I don't I don't know how much we're gonna get for him, especially in this climate. Um climate, especially if we probably might like some sort of foreign club. We don't usually get a lot of money there. There's no point selling him if we're not gonna get a good amount of money for him to reinvest. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. they, yeah. That that's the that's the frustrating thing for me because if we just sell him just to just to get Eze in. You know, where's where's your squad depth? Because really, to me, Lanzini, I think, should be one. As much as I love Lanzini, move him on. Like you said, that, but at the end of the day, the thing that we've done with Lanzini that we haven't with Anderson, we've experimented with Lanzini. He's been here for five years, hasn't he, or something. Mm. We've put him in different positions. Anderson, I think, I don't think we have. I think fans have been too harsh on him in the fact that, yeah, he might not take people on, but you're not experimenting with him. I know at Lazio, he played as a centre-forward 2017-18 Europa League against uh, Bucharest. He played behind uh, Immobile or with him. Um, one goal, two assists, 100% shooting accuracy, 100% dribbling, nine progressive runs and 3.9 one touches in the penalty area per 90. So that just shows you, you, we need to you know, experiment with him more and get the best out of him because, the, you know, I keep saying this at the episode, but there is a player there. Um, yeah. It's just... Yeah, he, yeah, he's got he's got peace and he, he's got skill. You know, he, he may not have like physicality like an Antonio, but he has those qualities. And we're talking about getting someone maybe to play up front with Ale. Yeah. Try out Anderson as a partner to Ale. See how that works because he has got a skill. He's great at them little through balls and and yeah. things like that. And like you said, he, he's he's deadly. You know, when he takes a shot, like some of the some of the goals he scored in that first season for us were were unreal. You know, it is, yeah. um, so it's just I guess it's a lot of it's going to be about as well whether he can fit into a Moyes style and a Moyes system. Um, that's the thing, for is, the thing is, like I, I, I know Easy is a Easy is a good player. I know we're talking to get him, and you'd much rather have him than Ben Rama because Ben Rama's. I don't think personally he cut it in the Premier League with in terms of his you know physicality and and stuff. But 
I don't, I don't know. I just don't think you could move Anderson on and just replace him with ease I, because I think that's a backward step. I think if you move Lanzini on to, say, Turkey or somewhere, um, somewhere like that, because he's not the same after his injury, which is a big shame because the, he was a good player, Lanzini. Um, and you you get ease to complement Anderson. You put them in the same team, maybe or work a structure. But like you know, like you've touched on, I don't know how he's going to fit into Moyes' system or if he will. Um, you know, because Moyes likes to play a four-two-three-one, doesn't he? We've seen at the the yeah. end of this season. But does he move Antonio to the left? Does he come in the middle behind Haller, or do we um, go four-four-two with someone next to Haller to get the best out of Haller? So you've got to look at these, you know, all these different options and think, you know, is Anderson going to be a main part of that team, or are we going to move him on? So, but ultimately, if you was to make the decision now, keep Anderson or sell Anderson, what would you be inclined to do? I keep him 100 percent I don't think there's any any debate. Um, you know, what we've touched on and you know, you can still experiment with him next season. He, he could be a massive player next season for West Ham. But if if pe if you're not going to implement a structure that suits him, um, you might as well sell it. But you're not going to get the value that we paid for him. You are going to get twenty million pound less. And uh no, but to cut the story short, keep him hundred percent. What would you do? Say, uh, you know what? I, I, I absolutely agree with you. People can get you on Twitter at DanWoff98. Um, so you can get a lot of the anal analysis and all of that. There's great threads on there. Ultimately, we'll see what happens with Anderson. Let us know what you guys want to see us do with Felipe Anderson. Do you want us to get another chance or is it time to go, as certain Arsenal fan might say? Um, so. Brilliant. Like I said, mate, thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank you for having um, me. Pleasure. Man, we'll be back. We've got Friday Night Pine, all of that, all other stuff this week. Again, Dan's going to come on soon. And one thing left to say, come on, you eyes. Come on, you eyes.